A very very warm welcome to yet another Kumekucha video. Information and analysis that is very difficult to find anywhere else. I recommend that you subscribe and you hit the bell button so that you receive notifications every time I have a new video. Karibu sana and enjoy. It is very natural to be suspicious when the story changes. And that is precisely what has happened yeah, in the case of Mary Wambui Kamangara. That is of course the wife of a man called Cory, yeah, who was last seen with her husband's mistress. But let us start with the post-mortem yeah, of Mary Kamangara and then we'll work backwards. Now, Pathologists have been able to establish that the late Mary was hit nine times on the head with some kind of metal, yeah, some kind of blunt instrument. This autopsy, which was carried out at the Kenyatta University funeral home, also established that the late Mary was suffocated. Now, it is still not clear how exactly she was suffocated but it is believed that it is this suffocation that caused her death and not the injuries on her head now this is a bit bizarre and if it is correct yeah it's very cold-hearted yeah because the initial injuries you know being hit nine times on the head obviously that is passion yeah it's a crime of passion Somebody was very, very upset with Mary. And if this information is correct, yeah, whoever hit her on the head, then cooled down enough, yeah, to be able to check her vitals. Yeah, and checking her vitals, discovered that she was still alive. And then proceeded to suffocate her to death. Now, of course, to me, that sequence is odd. Yeah, I'm not saying it's impossible, it happens. However, it stands out. And if it is correct, yeah, it reveals that the murderer was somebody who is extremely cold-hearted, very brutal, cold-hearted, and hardly has feelings. Let me just leave it at that, and let's back up. Now, the story has changed, yeah, and the story of uh, pizza has vanished. And it has been replaced by another compelling story. Yeah, and in my view, <clears throat> a fish story. Judy Wangui, the mistress of Bonacori, was secretly taking photographs of Cory as he was leaving his home. And the late Mary yeah, emerged from her house after Cory had driven off yeah, to inquire what this car was doing close to her compound, close to her house. That is when she saw Wangui, yeah, and they started talking. And the late Mary assisted her, yeah, by calling a mechanic, because her vehicle could not start. So the story has changed, yeah, from Wangui knocking on the door and offering to take Mary's son for pizza. Now, there's now CCTV footage, yeah, showing the two Mary Kamangara and Judy Wangui arriving at the restaurant yeah, and also CCTV footage showing the pair arriving at Wangui's house yeah, where Wangui was living. But what has really blown the minds of Kenyans are photographs, yeah, selfies which were taken by the two clearly showing them sharing Nyamachoma. Indeed, Feasting on one piece of meat, on the same piece of meat. <laughs> now, figuratively, <laughs> there are the meanings here. Because we also know that the two women were sharing the same man, yeah, Bonacori. What? Now, <laughs> I find that m more than mind boggling. Yeah, because ordinarily, Women who are sharing the same man <laughs> would never, ever, ever in a hundred years 
share the same of the same piece of meat in such a friendly manner it defies logic completely and can only suggest one thing yeah that mary was completely unaware had no idea that her husband was having an affair with Wangui, a passionate love affair which would be extremely strange yeah because there's evidence to prove that uh, the late Mary Kamangara was familiar with social media and Wangui was plastering her posts all over the place and they were public so even if Mary was not familiar with social media the big question is do you mean that none of our friends yeah, made aware of this post by Wangui? The post by Wangui showing off the man in her life, yeah, all over the place, even in Singapore, out having fun, asleep on the same bed, etc., etc. In my view, I find that highly unlikely. There is another possibility. There's also the possibility that uh, the affair between Wangui and Bonacori was over. And indeed, information to this effect has come out. Yeah, it is claimed, Bonacori has claimed, that uh, he was no longer seeing Wangui. Yeah, that the affair was over. That's what uh, Bonacori has claimed. And of course, Bonacori is still in police custody. And so this sharing of meat together yeah, was two women consoling each other. Two women who had been victims to the same man, if I can put it like that. That would be the scenario that would make more sense to me. Now, the other area where this story has changed significantly is that it has now emerged that Cory Karue, yeah, the husband to Mary Kamangara, Wambui, was not present in uh, Wangui's house when Mary was murdered. He was nowhere near the place. Yeah, and in fact, he was indeed in a place called Gong, Gong Kisarian. That is the new information that has now emerged. And so, again, that is another area where the story has changed and changed very significantly. Because initially, we were told, investigators were very sure that Bonacori was inside that house. When Mary and Wangui returned yeah, to Wangui's house, Rather, they came to Angui's house after enjoying Nyamachoma together. Very early in this case, we were told Bonakori was there. And not only that, we were told that is where the trouble started. Of course, apart from seeing Kori's photographs plastered all over the walls yeah, of the house of uh, his mistress. But what puzzled me yeah, is a piece of information indicating that Bonakori arrived at his house at 10.30 p.m., okay, on the night when uh, his wife was murdered, and then he sent a text message to his wife. Now, the reason why I find this new piece of information puzzling is because he will remember yeah, that we have been made aware of the fact that Mary was really begging her husband to come home so that they may discuss the way forward. There are even texts yeah, of Mary asking for money yeah, to buy pampas or you know, something for the children. And these numerous text messages to her husband yeah, were not responded to. Bwanakori did not reply. Yeah. This is clear evidence that Bwanakori was not yeah, living in the same house as Mary. But of course, husbands can always return. Yeah, even after staying silent, <laughs> after being sent multiple messages and not responding, they can easily come back home. That is possible. And so, on the night Mary was murdered, Bonacori returns home and finds that his wife is not there. And so he sends a text message to his wife. Yeah, and in the text message he says, Have fun. Don't come back. A bit strange, yeah, for a man who was known never to respond to his wife's messages and to hardly send her any messages. But on this particular night, he found it necessary to send her a message. Yeah, I'm not saying it's impossible, but uh, it's just not consistent yeah, with what we know from before. 
And that's not all. There's yet something else that has changed very significantly about this uh, very unfortunate story. Initially, investigators told us that she, they believe that uh, Mary was hit over the head with the butt of a gun, yeah, the butt of a pistol belonging to Corey, her husband. It was believed that this was the blunt instrument yeah, that uh, had caused the injuries found on the head of the late Mary Kamangara. However, now there's a new story. And the new story is that she was hit with a pressure cooker and not the butt of a gun. Now going forward, this is going to be very significant. Why? Because it means that the prosecution will not be able to present a very key piece of evidence, yeah, almost the murder weapon. I say almost because according to the pathologists, Mary Kamangara did not die from the injuries on her head. She was suffocated. But obviously, the injuries to her head were part of the murder. And the murder weapon is missing. Police have not been able to locate that pressure cooker. Where it was thrown away, together with some clothes with the blood, it's missing. Yeah. <laughs> Probably somebody came along, found the clothes, and saw the pressure cooker, something valuable, and they took it away. To sell or to use, who knows? But if this new story is correct, then it would have been a very vital piece of evidence because it would have had uh, blood, yeah, and uh, police would have been able to take uh, DNA samples. Now, a new piece of information yeah, in this murder <laughs> that has really shocked Kenyans is what appears to be a confession. Yeah, a confession from Judy Wangui, where she confesses that she murdered Mary Kamangara inside her house. That confession, yeah, plus the information that uh, actually Bonacori was nowhere near that house, can only mean one thing, that when the case of uh, Corey and Wangui, yeah, were in police custody, when they appear again before court on February 19th, that is next Tuesday, the court will most probably release Wanakori, yeah, because now he has been absolved completely. Wangui has confessed, and police tell us they've been able to confirm that he was nowhere near the crime scene. Now, while investigators seem to have been able to get their ducks in a row, yeah, they now have a story, they still have one grey area, yeah, one area, which uh, will be an uphill task yeah, to come up with something believable in a court of law. And that is the question of the motive. In murder cases, motive is extremely important. So what exactly was Wangui's motive? Yeah, because she obviously knew that Mary Kamangara was uh, Bonacori's wife. Of that there's no doubt, because Wangui even used to work for them. Yeah. And in having her passionate affair with Cory, she had already met Cory's wife. And so if one is looking for a motive of jealousy yeah, in this murder, it would make a lot of sense if Mary Kamangara had murdered Wangui. Yeah, that would make sense. However, Judy Wangui murdering Mary Kamangara, which is exactly what happened, <laughs> Is strange because Wangui was not the wife whose husband had been, had been snatched away. <laughs> it was Mary who was the wife, yeah, whose husband had, had been snatched away by Mpang Wakando. And what the sequence of events clearly tells us, yeah, if they are correct, that is, what they tell us is that Wangui is extremely cold hearted. You spend the whole day, or rather most of the day, with your rival, you have fun, you share nyamachoma, even the same pieces of meat, and you take selfies. And then at the end of it all, you murder her. In other words, she was able to hide her rage yeah, and her anger towards Mary most of the day, only for it to emerge later that night, yeah, and for her to hit Mary on the head. And you don't hit her once, you hit her nine times. 
and then you suffocate her. What? Well, that will be a hard sell, you know, as far as the motive goes, or rather as far as the motive of jealousy goes, that one will be a hard sell. So, what would be the other possible motive? In my view, investigators have to look very closely into money issues, yeah, because money, finances, can be a very powerful motive. A dead spouse cannot inherit anything from her husband. Legally, when a spouse passes on, whatever property they owned together reverts back to the husband. That's what the law says. And so, and we're totally speculating here, yeah, there's no evidence to suggest anything. We're just looking for another motive. Because the one of jealousy does not quite fly yeah, in this particular case. And so with Mary Wambui out of the way, yeah, it is possible to see how Judy Wangui would have some certain financial advantages. More so if she was going to start looking after the children, after Mary's children, and become their stepmother. All in all, the area of motive is very important yeah, in any murder trial. And if the prosecution want to get a successful prosecution, it is an area they cannot ignore. Because legal experts will tell you, yeah, a murder with a strong motive is a strong murder case yeah, for prosecution. And a murder with a weak motive or unclear motive is usually a weak uh, case as far as the prosecution is concerned. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekucha. Thank you.